It's day two here at the Sea Otter Classic 2023 and I'm on the hunt for more tech here at the Laguna Seca. Let's go check it out. I'm back in the Yeti tent because I have Peter here, VP of Engineering at Yeti, and I couldn't walk past without asking you a few more details about the downhill bike. So what can you tell me? Yeah, for sure. So this is our uh, Special Projects DH uh, frame for this year. Uh, special Projects for us are uh, really prototypes meant for our best athletes to uh, explore and experiment with the new technologies. And um, so this one in particular was a project that Richie Rood came by uh, really the fall, last, last fall, late last fall, um, with the idea that he wanted to do some DH racing for this season. Um, so for us, uh, we as an engineering team, we had the challenge to develop a uh, completely new bike and prototype for him very quickly. So to give an idea, you know, we got word uh, that Richie wanted to race really in, call it August of last year. So we had about six weeks of design time to, do, to develop this bike. And then uh, we were actually building up the first bike in uh, December of last year. So it was a really quick development process for us. Um, as an engineering team, it's really unique is that we have the ability to, um, you know, with that quick development time, uh, have no limitations in terms of what we wanted to try and experiment um, to, to make really the best bike possible. The entire linkage was all developed in-house in terms of the machine parts. So um, all the machine parts that you see here from linkages to uh, um, assembly parts were all machined in-house. All the plastic parts and the rubber parts were also 3D printed in-house. Um, in terms of the linkage itself, it is a uh, embodiment of our Sixfinity suspension design that you will see on our 160E. Um, it, is, it does have some differences though, so uh, obviously it's optimized for uh, a DH frame and a DH layout and um, all the characteristics that we're looking for for a DH bike. Um, some of the things that you'll see that are different is that our, what we call this center link, it's hard to see, but in the, um, the back here, is uh, actually hidden in the center of the frame as opposed to being on the outside that you see on the 160E. Um, so we could do that on this bike because we were not limited by uh, a dropper post. It also allows us to really optimize the front triangle structure, which is, which is really helpful. Also, you'll notice, you know, different than the 160E, is that this bike is a high pivot design and also utilizes an, an idler. So between the Sixfinity suspension and the addition of an idler, we have a, a ton of ability to, to finely tune the suspension of this bike. So we're really excited to see how Richie does this season. So we've just unveiled a brand new bike for Kyle Strait here. It is the Vitus Escarpe, as we know it, in a medium size. However, he's got a custom rear swing arm here made out of aluminium so that he could afford a slightly stiffer back end, but also so that he could get slightly shorter chain stays at 420 here. Obviously, he wants some snappy cornering, uh, but also he wants more of a stiffer ride whereas we would want a more compliant trail bike. Uh, he's also got a custom linkage here so that that is a lot torsionally stiffer as well. Um, and down here we've got a custom short cage SRAM X01 derailleur here. So it's a normal body but SRAM have actually built up this custom short cage so that it's shorter and out of the way. And obviously this is a custom paint job. This is based on Natural Light which is one of his sponsors now a beer company um, now Kyle's been racing Rampage since he was 14 he's one of the OGs and apparently he's been hounding this company uh, since he was that age to get a sponsor uh, but then they got him when he was of legal age and he's been with them ever since so it's a great nod to one of his favorite sponsors so at the Push Industries stand obviously makers of really boutique coil rear shocks uh, we're seeing a new fork which is completely brand new obviously eye-catching from the bronze anodized aluminium going on here but of course being inverted as well having no arch and effectively being an upside down fork um, and we can see obviously there's the push industries logo on the back they will be launching this in about a month's time but this is pre-production 
production. Although it is apparently very close to the finished product, uh, albeit there is a 3D printed uh, mudguard on the front here, and I'm told that it will be injection molded, so it will be a nice, smooth finish. Um, and we've got two models here. They're exactly the same, although you will get a color option apparently, so you can go for stealth black or you can go for this bronzing. Um, but they won't tell us any more details other than it's affectionately known as the P9 at the moment, although there isn't an official name. Uh, but speculation, obviously being inverted, there is the question over torsional flex, but I'm seeing that the crown is extended it's a lot longer, so potentially saving weight with aluminium, but giving a more rigid crown will help. Uh, there's a lot more going on down at the axle. We've got double pinch bolts here, and you know what? I know these guys do an incredible job with the 11.6, borrowing um, things like spherical eyelet bearings from the motor industry. So I know that they are super uh, geeky about the motor industry, and they've obviously taken some technology from motorcycles and blended it in with the mountain biking world. And I'm told that there is something really special going on inside that we can't see, but he said it'll change our lives and it'll be like nothing you've ever ridden before. So I'm so excited for this release in a month's time. And I think you need to watch out on the tech show to find out what it's all about. So I'm here at Forge Bond, which is a wheel manufacturer that's only launched in the last few weeks, but you will have already seen these wheels underneath the likes of Jill Kittner and Mitch Rapolato. And so we've got a 28 uh, width or a 30 mil width rim here which will be built up in Utah um, on Industry 9 hubs but what's really interesting about this brand is that they're using fusion fiber which you might have heard from companies like Evil on their loopholes and what it is is that you are using a process that is a thermoplastic rather than a thermo set uh, so what they're doing is using 100% recycled carbon fiber in their factory uh, with machines rather than humans. They're using 100% recycled carbon fiber with nylon. So instead of the traditional resin, which can be quite brittle and harsh, uh, and needs a full curing process. The nylon is a lot more forgiving, uh, so it should be more compliant while still being a stiff wheel. And also it's a much cleaner manufacturing process, especially with the use of robots. And not having a curing process means that a rim like this can be made from start to finish in about 20 minutes, apparently. So really saving on time, but also saving on wastage as well. And even if they do have any of the wastage from the process, uh, they're making parts out of all of that excess, uh, like levers for their athletes and stuff like that. So it's a really interesting company I really appreciate what they're doing and trying to change the game in wheels and I think these guys are one to watch this is the Smith vert as in vertical uh, new model from Smith it's got all of the flexibility you would expect from Smith for that comfort but also that secure fit for when mountain biking super durable what's new though is a new clip-in system which is semi-magnetic it just means that you can take off the arms without getting fingerprints all over the lenses which i really appreciate you also get this uh, adjustable nose piece which is not only a comfort and a fit thing it also means that you can quickly pinch it and move that lens away from the face so that it's nice and vented when it's a hot day or perhaps you're climbing up a climb. And this will be available in five different colors and the usual Chroma Pop offering that we always get with Smith as well. But you will be getting a clear lens with every model as well. And something I'm really excited about is that full Smith visual, that almost panoramic lens that you've got going on there. And this tiny little thing here, little cutaway 
for the cheekbones. Uh, obviously, I have really large cheekbones, so that just makes sure you've still got that venting and it minimizes the steam up when you're riding hot or wet conditions. So Smith are obviously really well known in the snowboarding and skiing department and they have had the uh, squad goggle which is mountain bike specific out for a while but they wanted to start afresh with a brand new mountain bike specific goggle and they've come up with the rhythm which is feedback from the athletes on what they wanted and one of the things they wanted is a wider strap so it fits better on a full face helmet they also wanted the strap slightly more concealed at the back here mainly for style purposes but also this extension here gives a bit more of a panoramic view and it also meshes much better with a full face helmet. Now the venting up the top here is slightly reinforced, it gives really good ventilation to stop the goggles um, fogging up but they've also invented this little dust cover which literally clips in and out of the goggles which stops any debris, dirt or you know flies coming into your goggles and getting stuck which is something that the athletes have fed back in the past and obviously it comes with uh, the Smith styling and the chroma pop lenses and I just think it looks great. So at the FSA tent, there's a handful of absolutely stunning bikes, starting off here uh, with Ministry Cycles. Apparently this was uh, number one, uh, the first ever prototype made. So it's CNC machined in two parts and then bonded together. And that's been paired uh, with these bright forks, which has a crown that has been CNC machined out of one block of aluminium. Handmade in Italy, apparently uh, the guy wants to know your riding style, what your travel is, and he custom makes the lowers to suit the bike and your riding. Um, looking really good with the FSA i29 wheels over here. Um, and in the back is the marketing manager's Norco, which um, not so much new stuff, but just still looking really good with these iridescent logos on the gradient carbon wheels and the FSA gradient crank set but if we look over uh, this side um, to a GT downhill bike which uh, doesn't exist but it definitely does exist uh, they've got the gradient crank set on there as well with this sort of one-off custom anodizing here and the brand new FSA gradient i30 wheels there which are in aluminium and they're available now but I'm told they will be coming out in carbon in early June and also just give it a little extra love to this downhill stem up here it's the FSA gradient helix um, and that's coming in iridescent uh, as well and just going back to that Norco FSA gradient um, uh, iridescent stem I've noticed that on G Atherton's bike have you spotted that I think I need to get myself one of those And that's another day done and dusted here at Sea Otter Classic 2023. Let me know down in the comments below what have you loved from today's show and don't go anywhere. Stay tuned tomorrow for day three.